part two of the series on how to make connection really easy for your group. Mark and I have uh, put our 33, 33 years. years and uh, having worked with literally hundreds of thousands of people mm. personally mm. leading these activities. And when we sat down to make this video, um, I always get frustrated when you Google for something and you find what shows up on the top are like people who paid to be there that are sharing activities that are way tired, like two truths and a lie, human not. It's like, <laughs> and so we've specifically chosen, like, from all that experience, we'll just save you a bunch of time and tell you our three absolute favorites in this video. In part one of this series where we explain some of our favorite uh, quick and easy icebreakers, I gave you question swap and explain the mechanics to that. If you missed that, jump back to that mm. video. M what I think as a team building, right? So when you start to get a little bit deeper, you start to say, all right, as a group, let's go beyond just the surface of, hey, we connected. Um, and start to form some uh, understanding around how, who each other are mm. and how we communicate, et cetera. And so what I love to do with question swap is add a second round. So mm. we've done this question swap, we've had exchanges at that level. But what I like to say is, okay, um, thinking about a team dynamic that you actually wanna work on. So when people reach out to me, and I'm curious to uh, hear what uh, you say, when people reach out to me, oftentimes they say, um, I just want our team to be more cohesive. I just had somebody from Google reach out and say, um, our team size has doubled from five to 10 people, and I wanna just make that work as quickly as possible, right? And so if you wanna do that, pick a dynamic that you wanna focus on and improve and tweak. So let's say uh, listening. If you have a team where people don't listen to each other, not gonna be a very effective team. Mm. And so I might lead a question swap and then say, okay, as a science experiment, Round two, what I want you to do is when you're in conversation with each other, forget about your entire lifetime of ungoogleable experience and just tune in to what the other person is saying and follow up with what they've said with one additional question rooted in your natural curiosity. Yeah. What I'm actually doing is training the team to listen well to each other and be curious about each other, which is extremely closely correlated to performance if that's what you're going for as far as building a team. Mm. And intention. Mm. Like you're needing to lean in, it means that hey, you needed to be listening in order to be able to ask that question. And that's intentional. That's not by accident because yeah. that's how relationships are formed. The one that Mark is about to share with you, uh, I most recently saw facilitated at, uh, with a group of uh, 250 really burnt out government workers. And this group lit up like a light bulb. And so if your group is anywhere on the spectrum uh, above or like their little arms crossed or whatever, know that even if there's a little reticence in the beginning, people jump right into the fun yep. uh, right away. And that activity is called? Crosstown Connections. Mm -hmm. Now, the context of this is that they asked for a team building experience without really knowing what that meant, which is yeah. partly what you were talking about, Chad. But once you dig in deeper, really what they were gonna find the most valuable was an opportunity to interact and share. So quite mm. honestly, any experience that invites people to interact and, and share. And notice I used the word invite. There was no one with a gun to their head. Like yeah. this was about set, you know, being sure that it landed mm. sensitively for them. So here's what happens. The first thing I asked them to do is that I explained they're gonna move into a partnership, a pair. If I need to, define it as one of two people. <laughs> if you're there with two other people or you're on your own, it ain't working. So you wanna go <laughs> find yourself a pair. And when you get there, the key, because already at this point, you can imagine the people are looking for their best friends, someone that they know, someone they like or are like. That makes sense. Yeah, so we would like <laughs> gravitate to each other, except we're wearing different types of shoes because that's the random criteria that we might use. So go find a partner who has a similar type of shoe or born in the same month, has the same last digit as your mobile phone number. There's a billion different ways randomly you can invite that person. Now, I'm not going to police it. We may still end up being together. Sure. But a whole lot of other people are going to take that opportunity. First partnership, I ask them to high five. That's the high five. Each one of these is going to draw from a bag of many different greetings. Relatively safe. You know, many people do that quite comfortably. I could move on to the next partnership. I'm going to find another pair in just a mm. moment. But I'm going to take this opportunity to invite those two people to share really non-threatening fun level. It might be, hey, Chad, you don't need to answer this question, yeah. but what's on your refrigerator door right now? A picture of Otto by a fountain. Beautiful, and now I wanna, oh, if I didn't know Chad, I'd, oh, who's Otto, where was the fountain, blah, blah, blah. Notice I'm leaning in, I was listening and asking more questions. 
and then I move on to the second pair. I then might invite another random uh, you know, situation where they find a person. There's clearly only two of us in the video, so we're gonna be the same partner each time. Yeah. <laughs> but I invite them to find different people each time. The next one is a low five partner. So low five is down nice and low, below the camera angle here. <laughs> well now we've got a high five and a low five, and I make the point, okay, in a moment, but not yet, go find and reconnect with your high five partner and then go back to your low five partner. That's the cross town connections approach. Yeah, they're crossing over each other's paths. Third partnership, remembering each partnership provides an opportunity to share. It might be a fist bump. And so you come in, and I love what Otto does yeah. as a fist bump, is that you come in as if it was a potato and you pull out like French fries. Potato, so, French fries. Yeah, yeah. so it's like <laughs> And now I've got a third partner. Again, an opportunity to share. Let's reinforce what we've learned so far. Notice the levels of interaction here. This is building team because I've now had three formal partnerships with people. More often than not, you've got no relationship with it all. Finally, and again, billions of different ways you can find a, 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 a particular partner, but here's one of my favorites, is that I talk of the secret handshake among fisher people around mm. the world. Maybe you love fishing and you already know it, but. We meet each other, we're both those people, we don't know each other, mm. so we go to shake hands, but our hands pass each other, and then a bit like a fish out of water, our forearm just flaps <laughs> around doing nothing. And we love this so much, we actually use both fish out of water. That is the Fisher Partner, the Fisher Partner greeting. We now have four partnerships, high five, low five, fist bump, oh. and Fisher Partner. So. No, four partners, lots of interaction. I guarantee you, it's my promise that you're gonna have lifted the energy off the roof and there will be some level of velocity that they move between their partnerships. And we've invited some sharing along the way. So the framing of this that uh, I love to tweak and make it more purposeful, right? Cross town connections. Uh, half the people that uh, reach out to me want to make uh, cross departmental mm. connections, right? So they want uh, different areas, different roles to exchange, yeah. meet, connect, etc. Yeah. And so there's a really easy connection and metaphor there. Um, and then the other, the, the, a beautiful spectrum of choice and the types of handshakes. Mm. So uh, Mark started out, uh, right, we got really like light, really uh, simple, low risk things, but you can also go much, um, I shouldn't say high risk, but a little bit more uh, wacky and playful yeah. if you would like to. And so one of the first ones when I learned this exercise was the lumber head jack handshake. Uh. I put a thumb out, Mark puts a thumb out, we have a two person saw and <laughs> begin sawing, <laughs> right? <laughs> Otto, who we've mentioned, uh, we were play, play, when planning this video, taught Otto the exercise and he loved the garbage man handshake. Uh. Remember this? So you go, wipe the slime off. Whoosh, and so it's these little things that um, you choose handshakes that will be either relevant or playful or spark laughter. And it is amazing. While I'm an optimistic person, I also can be a skeptical person. <laughs> and so when I uh, see a CEO or somebody who tends to be a little bit more serious mm. about to go up and do a garbage man handshake or garbage person handshake, right? What I is going through my brain is like, oh, they're not gonna like this. And yet, this group of 250 relatively burnt out government uh, workers that I described, I saw, I was in the crowd, I wasn't the one facilitating, I was in the crowd watching all the skepticism all wash away within 10 seconds because as soon as they do the handshake, they turn into human beings, not human doings, not roles. Yep. Beautiful. And, and don't miss the message here. That's team building. You know, mm. the, the willingness to lean in, to engage with other people and learn something from them and the thread throughout is fun. That's our promise, it's gonna work. It's always going to work if you've got those elements in place. Unless it doesn't and then you don't, don't email us. Yeah, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Ready, Mark's just gonna start doing the third activity without even describing it and see if you can pick up on it. So Chad, we're gonna actually play a little game. I'm sure mm. you know how to do this, but in a moment, we're gonna demonstrate to everybody out there that one of us can't. <laughs> We're gonna to count to three. Oh, okay. Now you would agree, you could probably count to three, right? One, two, three. It sounds weird, but it's gonna start with one of us saying one, and the other person says two, and it goes back to the first person, they say three, and then it goes one, two, three, one, two, three, as fast and accurate as possible. Okay. All right, you got the idea? I got All the right, idea. shake it out, because I already see you starting to tense up a little bit. All right, would you like to start on me? Uh, I'll start. Okay. One, two, three, one. Two, three. <laughs> okay, now that's on video. You can go back and you can just notice that slight hesitation. Nothing he did wrong, but it's part of the joy that comes out of what is a very, very simple exercise. So you invite your pairs to have a go at that. You might do mm. a couple of different pairs and then it's time to ramp it up. Mm. Okay, 
So now, Chad, we're going to replace saying one. No longer say one. Okay. And we're going to clap above our heads. Oh okay. All right. Be aware of the boom directly yeah. above us. Okay. <laughs> and so now it's going to look and sound like clap two three, clap two three, clap two three, okay. clap two three. All right. Would you like to go first? Or I'm going to have to go first. So uh, I'm going to uh, fail right I'm away. Primed. Two. Three. Two. Three. <laughs> All right, you saw the pause. And they pay us to do this. I know. It's what the heck? I can't. <laughs> All right, so you can see where this is heading. No prizes for guessing what comes next. We're now going to replace number two as well. All right, ordinarily, if we were standing, I would ask people to jump on spot, but we're actually seated. So this works perfect in an auditorium or a conference or a seminar. I'm just going to ask you to raise your shoulders. Okay, so it's okay. now clap, raise your shoulders, three. Got clap, it. raise three, clap, raise three, clap, raise three, as fast and as accurate as possible. Just like we're going to show all of our viewers. Looks ready? like you're ready to go first. I, I it's am. It's going to be above your head, I am, but I'm going to surprise you. Ooh. You go first. Oh, okay. <laughs> Remember, the clap is above your head. Okay. Very, oh, very yeah, yeah. Uh, important. Yeah, okay. okay. Three. <laughs> <laughs> I need some practice on the three. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You got the idea. Yeah. We're now going to go straight to three. So we've replaced one with a clap, two with a shake of our shoulders, and three ordinarily would be meow, just a cat's <laughs> meow. It's now clap, shrug, meow. Clap, shrug, meow, clap, shrug, meow. <laughs> Say that six times. You get the way. idea as, as we go through this, uh, one of my invites, like always, uh, with, when you're watching uh, the series, ruthlessly reinterpret everything we say and do and apply it to your own context. And so clap and shoulder shrug and meow could become symbols or things that represent your values or mm -hmm. things you want to teach the uh, group, right? So you yes. just replace Beautiful. Yep, okay. I know PE teachers, for example, who use three different physical exercises that teach fundamental skills um, yeah. as the exact activity, but it's engaging, it's fun. So we're going to do this now. We're okay. going to clap, <laughs> shrug, meow. Here we go. All right, would you like to start? I will. All right. Meow. Meow. <laughs> meow. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got You're really idea. eager to become a cat. <laughs> yeah. So the ability to laugh to interact, and you might do it with a couple of different partners if you choose. And we were doing it sitting down. You could certainly invite people. It's how I often do it is mm. standing up. That builds team. Why? We're interacting. Mm. We're inviting people to share, and that provides opportunities for vulnerability. I guarantee you, if you don't provide opportunities for sharing, you cannot build trust. It won't happen. That's why you'll meet resistance. Both the question swap and the variations, crosstown connections and one, two, three, just create a shared experience for people, which six months from now will relate back to. Somebody's gonna be counting off and they gonna be like, remember that thing? And so part of building a team is actually building up the repertoire of uh, things that the group has experienced together mm. that are unique, novel, and different than maybe any other uh, mm. relationship. Yeah, so and just see, giving people that unique and moment. And I'll see, see you later in the conference and go, ah, oh, I'm a high five partner, I guarantee you they're going to high five it out. Like you you may not have known this person from Adam or Eve at the beginning of the conference, but now <laughs> you've got that very fun little connection and you cannot have enough of that in any time you bring groups of people together. If you want to actually watch these exercises happen with a group, you should check out uh, this guy's website and the link in the description uh, because he's got this whole database with these activities and 512 more <laughs> lost count. That, um, that you can uh, find just the right activity for your group. That said, Team building activities, icebreakers are great, but at some point, the energy in your group is gonna wane. Yeah. So if you enjoyed part one and part two, um, do not leave without catching part three, where we unpack seven of our favorite, really fun, quick energizers, warm-ups, and fun group games that are all quick. You can pull out of the, uh, your back pocket, and so they're the perfect thing, no matter what your context is, to just have in your facilitator, leader, educator toolbox. Mm -hmm. And it might be to raise the energy, but it might also be to concentrate their focus as well. That, that works both ways. We're going to share both of those types. Three of one, four of the other. <laughs> Have an awesome day.